and welcome to the porch. <laughs> and today I get to talk to one of my favorite humans and certainly one of my favorite actors, Tracy Arnold, who I've known since she was a young girl. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> it feels like it. I mean, how long have we known each other? Uh, I started here in 1999 and I turned 30 that summer, so I wasn't a young girl. Yes. I was younger. Uh, but I first met you in an audition room. That's right. Um, I started grad school in 96, and I just felt compelled to audition for APT. It's really funny. I don't even know why. I feel like every choice I've made in my life has directed me to come to this town and do this work. And I, it, sometimes it's not clear to me how I came up with those choices. All right. Yeah. I really felt led here. Mm. Um, but I remember you vividly that first time I auditioned. I just remember, gosh, that woman is beautiful. Oh. And I also remember thinking, she has so much forward energy. She's so interested <laughs> in me. In you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And then you said, when, so you're in graduate school. When do you finish? And I said, oh, this is my first year. I have two more years. All right. And then I auditioned for the next two years. In my last year of grad school, you said, so when are you done with grad school? And I said, I'm, I'm finishing this year. And then I got offered a job. So uh, clearly education was something important. But you were you but, were stunning the first time I saw you. I think I remember your audition pretty vividly. That was that Viola speech yeah, that I went crazy on. It was great. <laughs> it was just great to see you take direction, which is like, uh, yeah. Yeah, I always call you a vending machine. I call her a vending machine because I, you can give her a note and it's like you just put a quarter in a vending machine and said a little more sugar, a little less cream and she changes. And that's, that's like not like a lot of people, um, the kind of instinct and kind of guts you have to like fully commit. It's a, it's, it's extraordinary. I, it's, it's easy to talk about because it's so <laughs> clear to everybody who works with you. Um, that's very kind. It and is the it's truth. Maybe the nicest compliment I have ever gotten. Oh, this to be called a vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though. It's true. Okay, so your first memory of APT. Like, what's your very first memory of APT? Oh gosh. Well, um, of APT because my first memory of Spring Green is coming over the bridge into town from Chicago and wondering where am I mm -hmm. and then I was housed in this little farmhouse way out in the country and I That's right. I, I got lost finding it and then I was wending my way past barns and when I found the place it was no it was not near anything <laughs> and I remember there was not a lock on the front door right there was a hook and eye <laughs> on the front door of this house and I thought I had just come from Chicago where I had bolt locks and right I mean, I, bears can't get in through the locks. That's raccoons, maybe. Maybe. But I, it was, uh, I was both terrified and thrilled. And I remember it was so quiet at night, except for crickets and occasional cows, uh, that I, it was stunning to me, the difference between the sirens and the just constant noise of traffic in Chicago to the, to the country. It took a, about three days to realize that I had found that I found home, really. Uh -huh. I mean, I couldn't express that. I, I couldn't express how badly I wanted to stay here. Hi, Mary, <laughs> my neighbor. Uh, how badly I wanted to stay here and, and keep working here. But it was, um, yeah, but, that, that, but that's where I was housed. So I remember that really well. But my first memory of APT, of being at APT, there are so many. <laughs> I remember you giving us a tour and your baby, Sophia, who is now oh, how old? 21. She's 21. She was like six months old and she was in a baby carrier on your front. <laughs> and it was a baby carrier that was meant to, to have her face towards right. you. But Sophia has always been a, she wants to be part of the world. <laughs> and she was turned around backwards in this baby carrier and she had the most piercing <laughs> expression which I now realize was Jimmy's face yeah it's now that. I know Jimmy well enough to know that it was Jimmy's face that I was getting yeah. but I didn't know that at the time I just remember thinking that is an intense little baby right <laughs> right it was Jimmy's look it was Jimmy's face yeah you're right about that. yeah oh, that's um, so funny I remember that and I remember early rehearsal rooms where 
David Frank, who was directing me and King Lear at the time, was um, opened up the table to discussion. And I remember Evelyn Matten, our production stage manager, jumping in and giving her feedback on a line. And I had, you know, I was I was 30 or almost 30 at that point, so I'd been working for a while, and I had never experienced a place that allowed the stage manager to offer up their opinion on a line. I thought it was so fantastic. That's cool. And I remember her opinion was great. And um, so many times people are very um, protective of that feedback. They, you know, a lot of directors are just, they only want themselves to be the ones that feed back to actors. And this place was opening it up to everyone in the room. Mm -hmm. And um, I just thought that was amazing. I loved that. That's a that. good memory to, to have it be like a solidifying kind of essential yeah. primary memory. And anime. because David was the artistic director at the time, I thought that's the leader of this company saying, what do you think, right. Evelyn? Right on. And she threw it in and I thought that, so this is where I am. And, you know, it's yeah. one of many early memory. I have a million, but I remember that really vividly. Um, so you said, like, you, I, the second question I've been asking people, you kind of already answered it, uh, is I asked, like, how, um, when did you know that this was home or you wanted it to be home? And when did you know you wanted to work here again? <sighs> and you said, like, three days in, you were like, I had found my home, but I couldn't articulate that. Yeah, I, I really knew by the end of that first summer, but, uh, um, there were all kinds of moments because I lived out in the country. I would sit out on the porch at night and look at the stars, which is something I couldn't do in the suburbs where I was raised or in the cities where I had worked. I was in the country and right. I didn't realize that I was a country mouse uh, until that summer. Uh -huh. I, uh, my father was in the Navy, so we moved a bit as a kid. Um, and my parents always have a restlessness about where they live. So even if we lived in the same town, they would move to a different house after a few years and right. they both had fairly <clears throat> impoverished difficult childhoods and i think those memories of those tough times m make them anxious to to improve or constantly change to something nice it's it's something within them so i never felt like i had a home base you oh, know right. a house that was <clears throat> home um and it wasn't until i came here and experienced the atmosphere of the town and the work ethic of the company where i thought Oh, I, I found my place. I, I remember falling in love with actors that first week. I, I was, um, fall, I fell in love with Bobby Spencer, Jim Ridge, and Jim DeVita within 24 hours. Yeah, we all remember that. You were mad about everyone. You were uh, crazy about I it. just thought, who, where am I? I remember listening to Jonathan Smoots and Mark Corkins and going, how are you making that Shakespeare so clear? It, it flipped me out. I. I so I knew that I had teachers in my presence. I remember Sarah Day the first day saying how long she had been with the company. And at the time it was probably 14 years, yeah, right, right, 12 right. years. But I remember being aghast thinking, you can be with a company for that long? And now <laughs> she's been, you know, it's been 20 more years. Her whole life. Uh, but I, I just, and you and Jimmy had children here and a home. That was unusual. And I thought you can live in a, a beautiful little idyllic town like this and do this kind of work. There were so many elements to it that knocked my socks off. Um, we're lucky they knocked your socks off because you decided to hang out. I always say it takes a real weirdo to want to stay here. <laughs> well, uh, guilty. Exactly, exactly, right? I mean, it takes the people, that, and I love weirdos. I don't mean that like a negative term. I mean, like they're out, outside of the norm of thinking what has to be, has to be. You know, like what they've been told is the truth is the truth. Like, no, they're kind of always thought something else might be true. And I feel like that's a, a collection of people here. Yeah. And that first summer, I think that first summer was also the year we did Pericles the, for the first time. And um, that was the first time I experienced what we now fondly call, or some people aren't fond of it, wood chipping. Yeah. Which right. is where all the actors sort of get together and discuss a scene and try to figure out collectively how they can make it clearer, how they can make that story clearer as a group, which I think is what theater's all about. It's truly a team sport. Uh, and we were we were having a rough time with some parts of that Pericles. Yeah, I remember and, that. And I just remember Jimmy and Bobby and uh, uh, Deb Staples uh, just, you know, starting a conversation and I was joining in on that. and. It, it felt so productive. Right, right. And um, it was my first real insight into how 
the next 20 years of my life were going to go. Mm. That, that, they, that there isn't a sense of settling of, good, this is good enough, or, or we got this. Yeah. It, we never, I never feel like that here. I feel like there's um, a group agreement that we all need to work harder on <laughs> every aspect <laughs> all the time and i don't oh, mean but i but i don't i really don't mean that in a negative sense I, we we all get to have days that are really hard and we get to struggle and we get to drop out for a day or two and go i gotta i just need to rest or mm -hmm. i need I to take do this i yeah. need to take 24 a hours this is yeah. a lot of stress but everybody else picks up the slack on those days. It's it's really it's an unwritten rule around here. You keep you keep answering my next question. Oh shoot! No, it's all, no, it's fantastic. <laughs> it like really means that my 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 questions are good because they it makes sense to follow each other. But no, I said John Lang's um, when he first worked here. He said to me this that end of the summer or the next summer when we asked him back, uh, our colleague John Lang's. Um, I, he said working here is like walking through fire. Oh. And I said, and he explained to me a little bit what that meant to him. And I kind of knew what he was talking about, but what do you think he was talking about? I suppose if, if you have a group of people, I, I, I don't, it just sounds like I'm putting us up on a pedestal and that is really not the point of my comment. If you have a group of people that are really interested in constantly striving to improve, and I do think that's what this company is, is especially, um, adept at we're always going hmm that was pretty good what can we do now uh -huh. you know we're, we're kind of always hungry for learning mm -hmm. i can i can imagine that walking into a company like that is a very um scary yeah uh, maybe intimidating and um, maybe that's what he means yeah he was a young man i mean he was a young young man when he came here he was younger than most of the actors he was trying to direct and collectively right. I always think the institutional knowledge was so big. Well, and that, you know, yeah. a lot of years of experience, especially if you're a young director and you come in and you, you have to direct a Shakespeare play when yeah. people the company have been, have been times. doing yeah. more. Yeah, that I that has to be intimidating. Yeah. I think that'd be terrifying. Yeah. What, what do you wish you could do over? One, just one, just one thing you could wish you could do over. Do you mean like a role or do you just mean Just whatever, whatever comes to mind, like what do you wish you could do over? A role, a role is great. A role is great. Since you haven't really talked about any of them, for good or bad reasons, wish you could do over or get another shot at it. Oh well, that I mean, uh, uh, in two thousand five, my kidneys failed and I went into the oh. hospital. And the year before that, David Frank asked me if I would like to join the core company. I was so honored and thrilled, and I had asked him. If, if if he would consider doing putting the play Candida Shaw's Candida yes. into the season because I was the right age for her and I loved the role and he put it in the season and about 10 days into rehearsal my kidneys failed and I didn't get to right. do it and beautiful Scary. talented Susan Angelo came in and rescued us all by playing that role beautifully but that was a really that was I have to say that was one of the most heartbreaking things I've experienced here, not getting to do mm. something that I actually wanted to ask for. So I kind of tried to stop asking for things because I felt like I brought that you on jinxed myself. It. You jinxed it. There you I go. Thought, don't ask for too much. Stop that. So oh, that's, I tried I to I have not. a feeling that's not why that happened. <laughs> Just let you off the hook on that. <laughs> um, so how, you kind of answered this, but how, um, in fact, you just did answer it with the Ashley Lather uh, uh, question about like looking at how you welcome people, but how has APT changed you? as a person, if it has. Oh, for sure. Oh, 100%. You could ask my husband that. I mean, that's... Uh, oh, gosh. How, how has it changed me, though? I've tried to become... And I'm really, really working on this right now, actually. So mm -hmm. it continues to change me. Sure. Um, I, work, I try to work on humility. I fail at that all the time. I try to, I'm trying, I'm working right now on, on asking myself these things before I speak. Is it kind, is it helpful, is it necessary? 
um, because uh, I, I'm very impulsive. Acting has been a wonderful thing for me personally because I was an introvert my whole life because I was an exceptionally shy child. When I got on stage, my parents were bowled over. They just could not believe that was their kid because mm -hmm. I was afraid to say boo to anyone. So uh, acting helped me because it gave me the ability to get my emotions out where I was at home I was just, you know, they were bricked up. But now it's gotten, I've gotten so adept at that, at being able to share my feelings and my emotions and my thoughts, that now I need to reel it back a little bit and mm -hmm. learn how to not lead with my emotions, but lead with my thought. And to, to just put some thought into the words before I just, bleh, you know, spit them out at people, because I, I tend to do that. My, my ability to be impulsive on stage is good. Yeah, you are. Um, but uh, it's not always good to be impulsive in life. So I'm just try I'm starting to learn that. But that wasn't the question. But it's no, kind no. of the question. No. I mean, APT has helped me to self-examine. Um, it's good. It's not that I don't it's still need therapy now and again. <laughs> therapy is a wonderful <laughs> thing, but uh, theater is a fantastic therapist in many ways. You get to explore so many feelings when you get the luxury of being in a company and and playing all kinds of different characters. That means you get to be empathic through different vehicles, and and then you get to take that home and go, huh, am I like that? Or why am I not more like that? You know? Right, right, right. Yeah. Absolutely. It's such a, it's such a, it's interesting. Some people have described the theater as therapy, a playground, like constant childhood, like playground, and mm -hmm. church. And oh, I find, and I yeah. find all of those things to be true. Yeah. I, I, APT is kind of church for me. The, the, the actual outdoors and the presence of it. I mean, I got married there, so. Yeah, it's helped, doesn't uh, it? Yeah. <laughs> what do you wish for APT's future? I mean, I guess longevity is a really uh, obvious answer, so I won't use that one. But I will say that we continue to diversify our company to make it reflect the, the world we live in. But more than our company, I would love to see a more diverse audience. Um, we've always had a fantastically diverse audience in age. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the most glorious things about ABT is that it's a family outing, you mm -hmm. know, and that we get people coming with their grandparents and they say, my, these people brought me as a child, now I'm bringing my children. Uh, that's an extraordinary thing that they sort of gift it to one another through the generations. But now I'd like to see, um, you know, the audience diversify in other ways. I think it's really important and um, theaters for everyone. And it's, it's, a, it's a way that we can bringing it back to that idea of therapy. It isn't just therapeutic for those of us that are on the stage. Yeah. It's very therapeutic to go and sit in communion with a group of strangers and see yourself in a story on stage. And it doesn't matter if the story doesn't, isn't your story exactly, but to see the humanity that you could be out in front of you and to experience that next to strangers and realize when you all inhale at the same line, or you all laugh at the same line, or you all tear up at the same line, it makes you understand that we're all much more alike than we are different. And mm -hmm. so theater's powerful in that way. It's, um, it's one of the reasons I'm most grateful to be in the profession. I, I feel like we help people in ways that are hard to articulate. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to express what is a, what is an experience when it's an experience that is internal. It's a right. hard way to, to talk about what the value of that is, but I, I certainly know it is. So that was well done. Um, so APT is all about words. We think words matter. Mm -hmm. um, actions matter more, but words matter. What's your favorite word? One word. Mom. <laughs> mm. What's your least favorite word? No. What's one piece of advice, this is the last question, what's one piece of advice you would give yourself if you could? Little Tracy, young Tracy, baby girl Tracy, young woman Tracy. Oh. 
that you wish you could give yourself that you know now about yourself? Everyone is as afraid as you are. Yeah. I believe that. <laughs> I thought I was the only one for a long time. Everyone's afraid. Yeah. It's so nice to be able to sit in a room where people can admit that so that we can get to work on not being yeah. afraid. Everyone's afraid and everyone's, I think, hopeful also. I, I don't know how you take a step through life without having some hope that you're not alone. And it took a very long time for me to realize that I really wasn't, that I'm, that, that I'm so alike so many people and even though we live different lives, and we're all, we're all children, you know, wanting love and acceptance and wanting to be seen. For who we are. Yeah. Not who someone wants us to be. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. That's a good answer. I'll take that answer. Thanks. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks.